Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you already know that, don't you? That's why you've tuned in. Uh, I'm joined today by Viv, but I just want to give a quick plug out to my mate's uh, healthy eating business. He's got a place in Barnsley somewhere. It's uh, People keep saying to me, Porky, you look great for 50. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I know I look fantastic for 50, but what's your secret? That's the secret. DNA food, healthy eating. Health is wealth. Great selections, breakfast, lunch, main course, desserts, protein shakes. So, any 10 meals, 40 quid delivered to your door. That's not bad, that is it? So, if you want to eat healthily, DNA is the food you need to be eating, and that's owned by Dempsey Way and his missus. Uh, delivered to your door. So, and just while we're on the subject of uh, Dempsey Whale, if anybody wants to take up boxing, Josh Wales, Jim, Mickey's Athletic, we're in uh, Court and Woodworking Men's Club, it's now Mickey's Gym. Get your son down there and get punching them bags and uh, do something constructive. Instead of sat on your iPads all day, you can chocolate like my kids, can't get them out of the house. So, anyway, how's Viv doing? You finally show your face. What's, what have yeah, you got mate. stuck on top of your head, Viv, if you don't mind me asking? What's that? It's a pillow, mate. It's a what? Pillow? Yeah, yeah. Hey, does your last rubber hands for it at night and that? <laughs> hey, so I just drag you out of the house and grab it. It's like a wire hey. bridge, isn't it? <laughs> I know. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the business's choice. So. Can you come a bit My closer choice. to the microphone, please? Yeah, sure, pal. Right. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Uh, so what's been happening in the sport of boxing? Well, there's lots of subjects, isn't there? Obviously, yeah. you know, obviously you've got the Dave Allen retirement. Um, you know, obviously you've got Dillian White, what Dan to Deontay Wilder going backwards and forwards. Uh, Where else? Obviously, Eddie Earn still spouting rubbish about different various fights and fighters. Um, obviously, you've got Canelo uh, splitting up with his own and obviously just setting it out of court. Um, yeah, there's quite a few things, isn't there? But obviously, I've got a lot of questions. Well, not a lot, just 10 questions for you today. Yeah. All right, then. Um, Fire so, away. All right, pal. Yeah. Let me just get the questions up. Okay. First one, Dave Allen saga. 12 trainers, twice retired, lazy, and doesn't take boxing seriously. Do you think Allen means retirement this time? Uh, if he ends up with a job at Sky, yeah, he will do, because I think he could do a good job at that. He's very articulate. Very well spoken, and I think he'd be all right. I think he'd be what they need at Sky because there's only really Carl Frotch, who's not anti establishment and not Roy Keane just yet, but there's only Carl who's really telling it straight. He told it straight about Chisora, and he tells it straight about a few other ones as well. The rest of them, and they know who we are, don't they? Bellew, cheerleader. Caldwell, cheerleader. Macklin and Bean, on another level, cheerleading. Juggiers, Spencer Oliver, cheerlead. And then we've got Adam Smith. Don't even get me starting me in. You know what I mean? Ready for lift-off, Matt. Rare turf, ready, durable, all action, compelling. Added spice, and his new word that he come out with the weekend. Sizzling. This is now Sizzling. The man must be on something. Well, whatever he is on now, Adam, I'll have a couple of gram of it. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't know, mate. I, I'd like to see David get a job at Sky because he spilled his guts for it for a man, but he's, he's going to get hurt if he carries on boxing. He's already talking like Scooby-Doo, but I'd like to see him do a Sky job, and I think that's, that's where he'd not come back to boxing. Yeah. If you don't get a gig at Sky or things don't happen what he wants to happen, what happens with pugs? They come back, don't they? They think they've got something in basement, don't they? They come back and then they keep fighting. Uh, but who knows, don't they? Personally, I think he comes back. What I'd like to not see him come back. Do you think, does that sound right? I'd like to see him get a job at Sky. I think he's earned it for all the good items he's had. But when they revert it over to expert analysis, I can Dave, 
have any expert analysis. I don't know. I don't know how that works. He's not won a belt, has he? So I don't know. But I mean, I mean, I don't think he'd be a good trainer because I don't think he'd be disciplined enough. He's already given up on that kid, hasn't he? That young Danny, he's gone to Ingalls, hasn't it? I don't think he'd be a trainer. Yeah, yeah. How could he train people and tell them to do this and do that when he couldn't do it himself? So I don't think he'd be respected as a trainer. Uh, and if he can't get up in the morning to do his own runs when he's a fighter, how is he going to get up to go train people? And it's a full-time job and you've got to be a probation officer, social worker, nutrition advice man, strength and conditioner advice man, life coach advice man. You've got to do everything. So training, no, you can't do that. Pundit work, yes. If that don't come off, he'll go back to boxing because that's all he knows, isn't it? He's not going to get a job at Polyfife, is he? In yeah. Modernism, working in a factory on 10 quid an hour, is he? He won't be able to do that. So I fear for him mentally, but if you give him a job at Sky and he plays violin enough, he might just blag it. If he keeps chipping away, you know what I mean? And I hope he does because he's had that many good ideas that he deserves a job at Sky. I mean, does Caldwell deserve a job at Sky more than Dave Allen? No, because he's too biased. Too yeah. biased. Do you know what I mean? And he's a taker. He's took out at sport. Taker. So no time for takers. Dave Allen gave him a job at Sky Sport. So I reckon. How would they present him now in terms of, you know, obviously when you've got Carl Froch, former world champion, Matthew Macklin, you know, Bell U, former world champion, even though obviously we're all vacant belts. Um, how would they present him in terms of the, you know, like the column at the bottom? Would it say, I don't know, for, what, what, how would you how would you think they'd present him? Do you know what I mean? I think Adam Smith would present him as popular game. Is Dave Allen? He was game in his day. Uh, up for it. Dave's up for it. I don't know how they're, but he's popular on social media. I don't know how they're going to present it. I don't know. It'd probably cause a lot of problems with other Xboxes if they did Dave Allen a job on. Yeah. It'd be a bit of a hot potato, but. They've been weeding him out, haven't they, now for three or four years, haven't they? So, and he deserves it anyway, in my opinion. He, he's took a shell of him, hasn't he? I mean, who, who's idea was it to send him out to Spar? Who's second? He hurts. To mimic Chisora. Come on. And that's finished him off, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? And, he, and the shot yeah. he got hit with, he pulled it, didn't he? Who's second? Big gloves on and headgear and all that. And they were. They were in a mess, one for half an hour. So I feel for him in a way. I do feel for him, but we don't have to fall into this. Oh, let's all feel sorry for him because he'll he'll manipulate the system that of the oh, you know. But I do feel for him. But end of the day, he knows what he's doing. Doesn't he? He's chosen to go his way. He's got his brain scramble, scramble, and now he feels that he's due a job at Sky. And I feel he is as well. But life don't work like that, does it? I'm a realist. No. Just because you've blagged your way on social media and blagged your way into people's thoughts at Sky and Match them, doesn't mean to say that you're entitled. Nobody's entitled to anything in this world. Would it degrade the sport if you got a job at Sky? Maybe a little bit. And that's where they have to be very careful. They could use him every now and then. But I think a good start for them would be to send him doing a bit of YouTube work with Coogan first, and Eddie's a sharp individual, he'll probably let him do a bit with Coogan, do a bit with Darren Barker at Match Unboxing YouTube, do yeah. a bit with Rob Ebert and see if he sticks at it. And then, he might be used as a freelancer at Sky like Colwell. But if he can't do that stuff, they're not just going to give him a job at Sky, are they? You don't no. just get jobs like that. Look at Glenn McCory and Frotch. Glenn McCory from the beginning, but Frotch, but what he did, he brought pay per view back and fought everybody, didn't he? Fought Wembley. The Carl Flotches and Josh Stewart, they walk straight into it on big money, don't they? Dave has a what, 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 what is he bringing to the table as regards achievements? Only belt is okay. got mantelpiece, is what? Snake belt. Snake belt, there you go. It's only belt he's got, zero. So he's not bringing any achievements. But they could spin it as, he had some great nights. They could spin that one. Well, they weren't that great because he's not got a belt. But he brings viewers, doesn't he? So they say, they're hoping they're going to bring his viewers on Instagram. 
So he brings that to the table, but so does Logan Paul. They're not going to have him on yeah. Sky, are they? Would they give Logan Paul a job? He's got an undefeated winning record, and he KSI. Would they bring him on? He's got a big following. He's got millions. You're not going to give them jobs, are they? So life's not like that. So I fear for him because if he don't get something in boxing to keep him occupied, he'll just sit in the house all day eating topics and line bars and something, won't he? But I'd like to see him on Sky, and I think they owe him that as well. They owe him it. So good luck to him. I think he just threw his toys out of the prime, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? I just think all this retirement bo- bollocks, I think it's just like yeah. a bit of attention. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously I'm seeing now, obviously, you know, fighters that are obviously at a lower level, they're obviously paying tribute to him, obviously on their Facebook stories and Instagram feed and stuff like that. So I just think it's a bit of attention for Dave. But like like you said, in late 2021, middle 2021, I think he'll be back, definitely. He well, gets bored got- too easy, doesn't he? Yeah, you've got you up. He gets bored too easy, Dave, does the name. You know, you know him better than me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's bored. What, laid in bed all day on Twitter? <laughs> this is how yeah. I look at it, right? He's said it now, hasn't he? He's retired and they've given him all PR, but it's been gone now. It's a week now, isn't it? So it's all gone now. And you, you sat there at home on your own in an house and thinking, well, that's it now. Well, what, what's he going to do now? So... Now he's said it and they've given him all PR. Got back. It's like you tell a lie. Got to tell another. Now he's, if that's a lie and he wants to come back, at what script is he going to spin now? I'm excited to see. I mean, is it going to be Operation White Rhino 15.7? Or is it going to be, oh, I feel like I made a mistake, I need to come back? Or is it, I'm stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet? I'm eating kangaroo meat now. Or it could be, I mean, instead, no, we've heard it all before, haven't we? It's, we keep going around in circles with it. I want the best for him, but I also don't want to hear bullshit. I just don't yeah. like hearing. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, and I don't want to be took for a mug. And I think he just reeled off 12 trainers there, don't you, that he's had? I think he's made fools out of everybody. Coming out and saying, Oh, I trained. I, don't, I took it serious. What? What, what about paying public? So does that justify him having a job at Sky? No. But the good items he's had, well, you think they owe him, don't you, really? But then again, they owe Kel Brook, don't they? What happened there? Boxing's unforgiven. That's what happens, isn't it, when you don't take the sport seriously? And you're just no. a gimmick? Yeah. So, what else we got? Sweet. Okay, then question two. Social media boxer versus talented boxer. Can fighters find the balance in which one is Dave Allen? <sighs> More Dave Allen questions. Ugh. Well, obviously, I, I said to David years ago, you know what you need to do? You need to get yourself out of that social media. I can't even outside it next door and uh, Pat that went out to his house. He went, yeah, yeah. And obviously he did, didn't he? But there's got, to be a, <clears throat> there's got to be a balance. A fighter can't be on Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, TikTok or something, Creepcast, wherever my kids go on that. You can't be on social media at two in the morning when you've got to be up at six. It's like some fighters <clears throat> are on PlayStations till 2 a.m. Joshua even admitted he was. It's no good. The phone needs throwing it. Ben, could you see Frotch, Clinton Woods, Robin Reed, Josh Whale on on till two in the morning? No, because they they know they've got a job to do, don't they? In the morning, their job is to train. So there's got to be a balance, has not there? There's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance. When I have my kids, right, two nights a week. My kids take liberties when I've got them. Right? What they do? They're on the they're on the their iPads till early hours, even on school nights. And whatever I say, don't go into their heads. And and even if it's not a school night, they'll not want to do anything. Walk dog, go golf balling, go over to the wood, conquering. They don't want to do anything like that. And I think. That's coming to the reckoning for 
box as, uh, as adults as well. Whereas, look, it's going off, but it's on going off all the time, but we're controlled, aren't we? And I think that's what's happening in boxing. And there has to be a time of cut off period, doesn't there? It's all right getting yourself out of there and promoting you, like Tyson Fury does constantly all day, but he still does his training. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you still got to do your training. If you want to have your, your Instagram and your social media after that, yeah, but there has to come a. It's got to be split up on it and even. It can't be in black areas, can't be in white. It's got to be in grey areas. Like, that's what I think anyway, but he's done a good job getting himself out there, David, and that. But I think he overkilled it towards the end, if you know what I mean. Yeah, With yeah, Jesse down the, and. Yeah, yeah. Bart yeah, Simpson yeah. slippers and. Summit down on the pants and all that. It was just some every fight we wanted and it become a bit clowny, didn't it? For me, for me, so I'm old school, man. I'm 50 year old. I'm his dad's age. I'm diff I'm from a different era. You see where I'm coming from? So yeah. for me, I think he overkilled it. It's all right doing all that if you're Tyson Fury just as Batman. Because he does it all the time, but he can fight, can't he? He's a winner. And he's undefeated. Yeah. He can get away with it, Tyson, can't he? Dave can't really get away with it because it's like, well, like Dave's coming out to me. It's like, it would turn into a bit of a laugh, wouldn't it? You think? I think so. And, and, and I didn't like to see it. Because I thought, once he beat Nick Webb, I thought he'd get serious. Get a suit on, get to, get to uh, press conferences in a suit. Say you're taking it serious. Don't just say, yeah, I'm taking it serious and be putting pictures on Instagram, show you taking it serious and don't act the goat, but if it's in your makeup, do you know what I mean? Does that sound harsh? So don't want to be harsh on a Friday morning. No, mate. Does that, does that sound right, no? you got to speak the truth, haven't you? I think with the, um, you know, the the little thing that he did with the socks down his underpants, I think that got a lot of the gay community interested, you know? <sighs> well, that might be put by his popular there. Yeah, it did. Might have a lot of gay people after him. Good luck to him. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, man, next question. <clears throat> so, Usyk um, hasn't set the heavyweight division on fire yet. Is it a game plan to get Joshua mandatory over the line as it's clear he has another two, three gears? Yes. I think it is. I think he just played with Chisora, me. I think he yeah. played, played with him. Uh, <clears throat> He's obviously a very talented boxer. People forget that he took Joe Joyce apart, didn't he? Yeah. Big six foot six, Joe Joyce, 20 stone. He took him apart. I'm not saying he was 20 stone when they fought, but a big lump. And saying, hey, can you handle a big guy who'll get bullied? Well, we all saw that what he did to Joe Joyce. And when you're 15 stone plus, 15 stone, 18 stone, it don't matter at that size. Because if you get hit, you're going to go, aren't you? Yeah. Tommy Earns punched harder than heavyweights and he was 10 stone. So that's how I look at it. 10, 11 stone, he were icing people and icing cruisers and everything, gym. So, you know, you can either punch or you can't punch. And I think, oh, I think he can punch. Well, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? But I won't read too much into that with, with Chisora because he looked to me like he just played with him. Played yeah. with him. I think he was just playing the game, wasn't he? I, I, that's what I think. Uh, um, because I... Um, is it the boxing channel? Is it your friend, Ingrid? In, Ingrid, Ingrid, his name is? The yeah, Ingrid, sorry. Yeah. Um, obviously, he had um, Usyk's former trainer on it. Didn't he? he has an interview, and I was obviously listening to it. And obviously, his trainer said that Usyk, in, in his opinion, could definitely go extra two, three gears. You know what I mean? So... Obviously, he knows it better than anybody. So, I, I personally think he was just playing the public. You know, obviously, he wants that Joshua fight. So, if he starts blasting people out, especially, you know, the uh, Weatherspoon and the Chisora one, if he starts doing that knocking them out, would he get that Joshua fight? I don't think he would. So, I think he's just playing the game, I think, you know? Yeah. I've got a picture here. Um, all right. I've got a picture here of Ingram. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy, yeah. That's yeah. uh, it's about five years ago, like five and a half years ago, I think. Uh, Dennis Thompson's show, good old Dennis, eh? 
We've got some at Bubbling, Russ. Calm down. Chill out. We've got some at Bubbling, have we, Dennis? Yeah. Well, it'll be the longest bubble to ever bubble. <laughs> it's stuck to the pan, Dennis. <laughs> it's been bubbling that long. <laughs> had to get that. Had to get that digging. Sorry, Dennis. Oh, morning, Dennis. Yeah, go on. Next question. Oh, hang on. Big shout out to Ingram. Uh, BWM TV, Bayloric TV. Get on his channel. It's a good channel. <clears throat> All right, next question, mate. Um, what's your take on Joshua's Google advert turning in his comments from a negative into a positive? Is Joshua untouchable in the box in a media world? Joshua what? I'll read the question again. So, what's your take on Joshua's Google advert turning his comments from a negative into a positive? Is Joshua untouchable in, in boxing and in the media world? Right, this is how I look at it. Joshua went to a went read some out at a Black Lives Matter rally, didn't he? Is that right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Are right, you already talking about this? Because you're a black fella, aren't you? You're out right with this, yeah? Mate, I don't, I don't mind to talk about it, mate. Everyone's got, right, uh, you know. Okay. Well, this is how I look at it. You've got to be careful what you say now, because there's a lot of snowflakes about, isn't there? Joshua's read something out, but when it's come on top. He said he didn't write it. Well, well, we must have read it before you read it to know what you were saying. You were happy to read it. And then you've gone there. You've read it out. And you were more or less saying, don't buy anything from white people's shops. Am I right? Or would he say yeah, yeah. buy something well, from black people's? And like I, I said, I, I, I don't really... I'll be honest with you. I haven't really heard his actually you know the actual whole thing but obviously off various people he did say something along the lines of that but yeah, um so he said that and everybody turned on him and it looks like matchroom have said get back in your box we'll have to clean your mess up so it all went quiet didn't it and now he's come out and he's done this google thing and he's like peter pan isn't he yeah he's yeah like mary poppins he's trying to be mary poppins but if you back up a couple of years ago, Peter Fury had a fighter in his stable. They used to stay in, in Peter's digs and that on Alleywell Road where in Bolton. And that fighter was called Eddie Chambers. And Eddie were having some back and forward with him. I think they were direct messages. And one of Joshua's messages said, you're a disgrace to the black superior race. Something like that. And I think something else he said, Robert McGarvey is okay, he's misunderstood, but he'd been slaughtering people in the villages and in Nigeria, am I right? Mm, something like that, yeah. And he said, he said, there were some other things as well. And when he come on top again, Ern came out, he said something totally different to what Joshua said, because one of them said he got hacked, and the other one said, oh, it's been took out of context. And it, it were all... I don't, I don't know, but it looks like he gets a pass. When you're selling out arenas, you're going to get a pass, aren't you? This is where this is where I come to that thing about Joe Gallagher. I did a video the other day, but it only a couple of minutes, this video, and I said, Joe Gallagher got his words mixed up in an interview. He said something about race, but he meant equality. Fair enough. I think he backtracked, but Joe had to come out and apologise. Joshua, there's nothing come from him, is there? He's just, he does what he wants, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Top dog, he's yeah. the top dog. Yeah. I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. It, it, it doesn't sit well with me. I think we have to have a, a level playing field for everybody. I think he should have been punished for what he said. Because if I came out and I said, listen, it's Big P here, yeah? the voice of our car boxing. Don't be going any in any of them Jamaican shops over there or them Nigerian shops eating their food. Get in here. Get in white people's shops. Get fish and chips down here. Pie and peas and liquor. Get some of that down here. Jelly deals. Beef and Yorkshire. Don't be eating that rubbish. If I started coming out with stuff like that, there'd be hell on, wouldn't there? I'd be called a racist. I'd be called a northern this or whatever. So got to be a balance, haven't they? But I think that Joshua should have been punished. I thought Joe Gallagher were made out, to, the, the, 
he was put in an awful position by Eddie and I didn't agree with it. For once, I came to Joe Gallagher's rescue. But, it is what it is, isn't it? Joshua gets a free run, doesn't he? Because he's surrounded by all these people that feed off him, don't they? Look, they've all got to be paid, haven't they? Have you ever seen his entourage? Go over it, go pay to EIF. It's a convoy. When they go anywhere, it's a convoy. It's like Michael Jackson. Convoy Range Rovers. All with matching tracksuits on. All, all never had a job before they got with him. All dossers. All basically dossers, mate. Surrounded by dossers who he feels comfortable with. And he says, that's up to him, isn't it? But once it's all over, the dossers disappear, don't they? You know what I mean? It all comes to an end eventually. But do I wish Joshua well? Of course I do. I think he's turned his life around. But don't start coming on the internet and on telly preaching about this and that and trying to be Muhammad Ali because you're not Muhammad Ali. Because he's been trying for years to be Ali, hasn't he? Even copying certain poses with clothes and that, haven't he? Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You go onto Joshua's Google, you'll see yeah. him doing that Ali pose with tweed thing on and some 1960s outfit. Trying to be Ali and trying to be... Uh, uh, look, he must have loved this Black Lives Matter thing. He must have thought it was like Ali back in the day. He must have thought, oh, I can be Ali. Well, it backfired, didn't it? <laughs> it backfired. So, unlucky, Dossa. But, Tyson Fury, we have, to, we have to pull him up about it because he didn't waste no yeah. time, did he? We had Traveller's Lives Matter one, didn't he? <laughs> just the state media, mate. That's all it is. Just want to get themselves out there. Tyson's parked up for the next nine months now, isn't he? He's just done nine months and he's going to do another nine months. So expect a few more of them. But what I'm looking forward to the most is the Travellers Lives Matter movement going to London. He's taking a million travellers to London, isn't he? His word. Yeah, that's what he said. His yeah, word that's what he said. Tyson. Where's these million travellers going to London? Could you imagine if they did that, though? Could you imagine traffic jams in London? Ha, ha, ha! Eh? Could you imagine all traffic jams? I was at Lowe's in the tranny pickup. <laughs> in traffic jams. There'd be traffic jams all over London, wouldn't there? Going by Buckingham Palace. All congestion charges they'd get as well. They wouldn't get paid. <laughs> be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would uh, it'd be an event, would it? wouldn't it? It'd be an event. Matchroom event. So, <laughs> next question is, obviously, we've been talking about Tyson, but we might as well talk about the, uh, the cancelled show. Um, are, they, are they shooting themselves over the trilogy outside the ring, the reason why it's cancelled, these yeah. uh, cowboy outfits? When has Frank Warren ever backed down to anybody? Never. never Just took the straight away, doesn't he? Yeah. He's not got all bases covered or Bob Adams running the show. And yeah, Bob, you know, Bob's definitely running that shit. Because Frank's playing second fiddle now, isn't he? So he's had to swallow. And that alert his pride a bit. Plus, he'll be worried that Tyson will be parked up now. And he'll end up with Eddie Earn. He'll see his yep. corner. How many fights have you got left with Adam now? Two, is it? Two, is it? I think it's two, yeah. Because he's had Wallen, Tom Schwartz, Wilder, Wilder again. Actually, might be one more. He come back. Yeah, it might be one more, actually, with Aaron. Yes, one more, one more, sorry. Well, this is how I look at it, right? They might not have let him have that fight, you know, because contract's over then, isn't it? Mm. There's all sorts of intangibles. Look, these people have been around the game years. They come with smiles, don't they? Mecca out the mates. He's my new best friend. But the reality is it's money business. Bob Aaron, Frank Warren and Tyson Fury, right? You've got three snakes there, right? Could you imagine being sat in a room with them with no light on? They will shaft each other as look at you. They'll shaft each other, mate. That, that's what they'll do. Because they've been doing it for years, haven't they? Tyson did it with McKenzie, shafted him, traded him. Yeah. He can't say Carl Frost traded McKenzie and that he didn't. 
Do you know what I mean? Frank Warren, we don't even need to go there. Bob Arum, oh, you just seen where he's doing the Crawford, haven't you? These people have been at yeah. it years. Tyson's been in the professional game now 12 years, over 12 years. So he turned pro, didn't he? Summer 2008. So he's seen it and done it. And he's, he's probably had run ins with people and sanctioning bodies, promoters, managers. He's had his ups and downs. So he'll, he'll have learned the hard way. But so have Aram and, Aram and Warren. They're all out to do each other, mate. So watch it all unfold from afar like an onion. Because it's going to unfold. Because when you get big stars like Tyson, and, and all what comes with it, you're always going to get legal problems, aren't you? You can fight, but it's a minefield. And, uh, but what I don't like about it all is we're all saying the best mates and working together, <clears throat> bar the bar, and bigging each other up on interviews, but <clears throat> the reality is they all know what it is. They all know the end result's money and that they can fall out at any day. And they all will fall out. Listen, listen. I said this months ago, Tyson Fury and Frank Warren will end up in court eventually. At some stage, it will come. <clears throat> Without a shadow of a doubt, they're going to court. Nobody gets away from Warren without going to court. So, but I see them all falling out. So, but I've been saying it months, so. So, hello, Piggy. Next question. Next question. <clears throat> Conor Ben hasn't hasn't fought for an near English, British, Commonwealth or European title yet, and he's had headlining on Sky Show. Is this what boxing's coming to? How many times has he headlined now? Two, three. It's pay pay a new at your call with a headline, wasn't it? Yeah, a small headline though, wasn't it? Hey. It's quite small, one, wasn't it? It's your call, you said. Yeah, it doesn't hold that many your call. Connor Ben, he's headlined because his second name's Ben, isn't it? Yeah. Right? He's not beat anybody in the top 200 on box, right? You do know that, don't you? I know that, yeah. Right. Next one up, I mean, between his ranking wins, he's 15 and 0. He beat a guy 200 ranked last time. But he's been inserted in the WBA at number 15. So how can that be? I don't know how that can be. I don't know. All of a sudden, people are pinching these top 15 rankings. So technically, Manny Pacquiao, is he WBA champion? Yeah. Manny Pacquiao, if Conor Ben wins on Saturday, can call up Eddie Hearn, or his manager can call Eddie up and say, would you a voluntary which means you can pick anybody from top 15. So Manny Pacquiao could fight Conor Ben in February if Conor Ben wins tomorrow. How crazy is that? You think they'd take that fight? Hey? You think they'd take that fight? Well, they'd take it in a heartbeat, wouldn't they? They've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. If he loses, well, we're going to lose anyway. If he wins, he's a megastar, he gets a rematch. Of course they'd take it. If Conor Ben wins on Saturday, he can fight Manny Pacquiao in February. I know people will scoff at that, but look at Anthony Yard, what had he won? He fought yeah. Conor, didn't he? The Wild Wild West. Stranger things have happened. If Conor McGregor can fight Mayweather in a £340 million pound fight, what's Nigel Ben's son Conor can fight Pacquiao? Here at ranking. Josh Kelly's WBC number 15. His best wins are 112 box there. So how are they getting these rankings? Because the promoters lobby to get them in there. So personally, Conor Ben should fight David Evanesian because he's ranked across board in top five, is he? Top six all the way across board. All sanctioning bodies. But he's the only one that's earned that ranking, only David Evanesian. And he's swerved by them both, isn't he? Ben and Kelly, Josh Kelly. So we'll, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Boxing's bent in it, man, big time. Mm. Not good, is it? Jesus, man. Nah, <laughs> it's terrible. It's probably the only sport that 
that stuff happens, doesn't it, when you think about it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. Very crazy. All uh, right, next question. Uh, we're going to move on to Tommy Fury. Um, Tommy Fury, for now, fighting stiffs. You gave Tommy the benefit of the doubt by saying he is a baby, learning on the job. Yeah. When is Frank going to give him an opponent with a pulse? And sh shouldn't he be fighting decent opponents because of his name he carries in the social media following he has? Tommy Fury will go to 20 and 0. They'll milk him as much as they can for another two year. Two or three year. When he's about 25, they'll let him off at leave when he's learned his craft. And he's earned them a lot of money. And he's earned his son a lot of money. Or a bit more money than what he's got. That's what will happen. He's got, you can't expect him to be going and fighting top guys when he's still raw and he's raw. You know what I mean? Not top guys though, but just someone that can fight back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, yeah. He needs to step it up a bit, yeah. And yeah, yeah decent yeah. opponent. Someone that could, you know, throw one too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That guy was there to lose, wasn't he? Oh, God, he's awful. Jesus Christ. He was like... It's awful. Yeah, go on. What's the next question? Next question. Callum Smith Canelo... It's a cash out for Team Smith. What's next? Not what's next after the Canelo defeat for him? Uh, yeah, if he if he gets defeated, Callum might win. Yeah. No. Nah. What's Jeez. next? He'd have to be Billy Joe, won it, or Billy Joe fight Canelo and then Callum after. I think Billy's got to step up, hasn't he? After Martin Murray fight. Yeah. What's happening to him anyways? Billy Joe, I haven't heard of him. Been quite on social media, hasn't he? He's training with Mark. Since Mark won't put me any of that messing about. Why do you think he's gone back to the Tibbs? Eh? I said, why do you think he's gone back to uh, Mark Tibbs? Uh, probably because uh, maybe he couldn't take it serious with that Ben because that Ben were younger than Billy and tail were wagging dog at you, the thought, wouldn't you, in that situation? A bit like with David A yeah. and uh, Shane McGuigan. But whereas David A wouldn't have messed about like that with Adam Booth, would he? Adam Booth! Go to Adam Booth! He's the best! So, yeah, I think that's... I think Mark Tibbs is a bit like Peter Fury. is quite disciplined at an old school. If you know what I mean, does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah. Why do you think, though? Obviously, you know, these fighters, though, for example, like, you know, like, obviously, Billy Joe, Kell Brook. Obviously, Kell Brook went back to Dominic twice, didn't he? Billy Joe's gone back to uh, Timsey twice now. Why do they just keep swapping trainers? I don't get it. Like, you know, I just don't understand it. I don't know. Probably because they want to do what they want, don't they? Well, Billy left Mark, Tibbs, and Jimmy because probably wanted to, I don't know. But they're back together, so that's the main thing, isn't it? Right. But I don't know why he left Ben Davison and Dominic Kindle. I don't know. I've a good idea why it didn't work out with Dominic Kindle, but I'm not going to say on here. But I, I just think that maybe Ben Davison and didn't see eye to eye on a few things. I don't know. I mean, you could come out with all this. He asked stuff about, well, uh, I wanted to train over here and he wanted to train over there and all that's a lot of rubbish, all that. You know, when you've got world champions, you should do what you do what a world champion wants. And if you're coming out and saying, Well, we Billy wanted to go train in Fiat Aventura and I've got my gym here, that means Billy don't want to work with you. Because if you're a good trainer yeah. and he respects you, if you're over in England training with you and he worked around the fact. But Billy's come out and said, no, oh, I need to get away and that from all my mates and all that because I'm not dedicated to when I'm around them. And Ben's saying, oh, I've got a gym over here and I, I don't want to go about it. Look, it's rubbish. You just don't want jelly now that I'd have thought and stop seeing eye to eye and Billy probably doing what he wants. I don't know. But I don't believe any of that. I don't believe it. I don't believe that rubbish. If I'm a fighter and I've got a trainer and I respect him, I'll want to go where he does because I need him. And he needs me as well. But yeah. I'll want to go where that trainer says. I won't, I won't, I'm not going to mess him about 
You, you, you want to work as a team, don't you? And if they can't work as a team, you've got a gym in England. Well, you go there then, don't you? If your mates start coming around saying, let's go do this or do that or go pub or whatever, you, you tell them to piss off, don't you? Or you get your trainers to do it. You tell them, look, respect me, I'm in camp. So I don't, I don't believe all that. Poppycock. Hogwash. Bullshit. What's your take? What's your take on um, Dillian White, obviously, um, saying um, that Wilder's got to basically dance to his tune if they fight? Dillian White's his a latest comments. He's a crackhead, man. I don't like him. Carrying off like a crackhead. So he said yeah. that about Yui Fury, didn't he, a couple of years ago. Yui's on crack. Well, what are you on, Dylan? Crack? Coming out with your owl first every two minutes. The one on IFL, IFL last night, wasn't there? Wilder is a C-U-N-T. Carrying off like that, you crackhead. You know what I mean? Cracker. So, well, this is how I look at it, right? Gillian White, who's his, who, who, who's, what best belt he's got at home? Hey, what's the best belt he's got at British, home? Vacant British, isn't it? Hey? A vacant, vacant British against Ian Lewinson. Get a grip of yourself. Not Joshua back at Wembley for, for all them belts, 90,000 fans and 5 million. So oh, he's just been knocked out, hasn't he? Iced. Ice, ice, baby. He's just been iced. And he's going on about a guy that's been iced. Dylan's been iced twice. And he's slagging off Wilder, who's a five year world champion with his 11 defences. So, and he's slagging Wilder off. He should be begging for that fight. Because when they wanted it before, Dylan's arse fell out. Dylan, come see me. Why do you think they keep spinning it? Why do you think, why do you think they keep spinning the narrative then that uh, Wilder's team, you know, Al Haim and Shelley Finkel, they knocked that back, that fight back, the Dillian oh. White fight. That's Dillian what White. that's what the matchroom lot keeps saying. Dillian White's contracted to fight for Vetkin in it end of January. Am I right? So he's not that's going right. anywhere till at least April, is he? April, May. So why start piping up having a work Wilder now? is to keep his name out there because he's got no to talk about. That's all. We're talking about a guy here that's not number one rank no more. He's not even mandatory. So we've got a guy here who's got a vacant British at home. He's been knocked out twice. What is he pushing 34 year old now? He must be must be getting on for 34, 33 at least. 30, 33, 33. 33 year old. He, he's on he's the top of hill coming down. He's not even reached top of hill. He's already turned back before he got to the top of hill. Get him, man. He's on his way in he now, him. Him and his team. What happened to his big team, anyway? Big strength and conditioning men that he had. But that didn't work for him, did it? And his new trainer. <laughs> what happened there? You know where, do you know where Dylan White's heading? Let me tell you. Do you know all them around him? Do you know what they're heading for? Skid Row. They're heading for Skid Row, mate. That's where they're heading. They can't see it yet, but they're heading for Skid Row. <laughs> Skid Row, mate. How many more pay-per-views do you think Dillian's got in him before they uh, brush him to one side like they do with Dave Allen? Well, well, I don't know. He could fight Tom Little on pay-per-view at the moment, couldn't he? Tom would probably ice him anyway <laughs> if he were in good shape. Uh, Dylan Moir, how many pay-per-views? Well, he's got another one with Pat Petkin. That's his sixth. Carl Frock's only had three, by the way. So that's his six. So if he wins that, he'll probably get another three or four. If he loses that, he'll be begging for Wilder or Fury or Joshua. He'll beg. If he can't get Joshua, or if he can't get Anthony Joshua after Povetkin, if he beats him next, he will cross over the street to uh, Frank Warren. He'll have to do. But I don't... I think he'll fight Dubois or Joyce or any of them. He doesn't mention their names, does he? He never mentioned Caballero. No. He didn't want to fight anybody that's any good. Malcolm Tan, Marius Vac, Lucas Brown, Pavet King twice. These are all 40 odd year old men. Maybe I should start training and fighting. You know what I mean? I'm 50. You know what I mean? 51 next year, our kid. I'm heading for Skid Row, ready for Knackers Yard. Well, Dillian White's fighting people that are ready for Nakajar. I mean, 
What is perfecting beats in what we're going to have next summer? White versus Allen, two. Repeat or revenge? Is that what's going to be? Raw beef? A crossroads fight. Is that what's going to be a crossroads fight? Now or never. I'm checking it serious. Operation White Rhino and the body snatcher. Fucking hell. Between Dave Allen and Dylan White, they've got a vacant British between them. What's going on here? Has somebody just pissed up my leg? Am I a lollipop or something? <laughs> hey? <laughs> I think that I think though, you know, I think um I think obviously if if he loses this Povetkin fight again, I think uh they'll throw him in with Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, man. He'll better that Joshua needs fight, opponents. won't he? He's got his hands and knees. Eddie, Eddie, I'll take it now, Eddie. I'll take it now. Coogs, Coogs, get me on IFL TV, Coogs. Get me on IFL TV. I'll make you curry. It's coming out with stuff like that, won't it? But he'll beg. Povetkin beats him again. He will yeah. beg for that Joshua fight. So yeah. it'll be White Joshua next year. Um, probably, I don't know. Probably, it'll be somebody else. They'll do anything by fight fury, won't they, Joshua? So that again. Joshua will do anything by a fight, Tyson Fury, won't he? Yeah. You think he wants it? No. No. Pull He's just chasing. Pull left, and then he'll fight twice next year. One Dylan White, and the other one, I don't know. Who, who, who do you think the other one? I don't think they want to fight Lucet. I think they'll fight Dylan White next year, one of them. Who knows, they might even rematch Pull left. They'll do anything to to not fight Tyson Fury. The Chinese bloke. The Chinese Zane. bloke who's just been slipped in at number fifteen, hasn't he? In rankings, yeah. all of a sudden, so he's he, he's ranked. So it could be Dylan White and and, and and the big China man next year. Yeah. That's it. Could be in China. Yeah. Be like a Chinese, Saudi job, wouldn't it? Chinese girl is just signed on the undercard. Like I said, they're going to do anything yeah. to uh, swerve Fury and keep the pennies rolling in because they know the Fury fight's always there. And this is how people think. Accountant by name, accountant by nature. But whereas Bricktop, he'll be wanting it. He'll want to get that fight on because they need the, the revenue, don't they? They're on, they're on back foot, aren't they? More than Hearns are. They don't take, they don't throw up dice turns with with the fighters, do they? They don't they don't uh, roll it as much as Frank. Frank likes a bit of a punt and a bit of a gamble, and he'll put his money where his mouth is. But looking at statistics and things like that regarding match done, they don't take risks. Do you know when Chris Eubank, who was a cash cow for years, he had to defend his belt in Ireland, didn't he, against Steve Collins? Do you remember? And then the rematch were in Ireland, so that just shows you that, that, that they don't win purse bids. Only because first one were a purse bid, wasn't it? We've been saying it for years, they don't win purse bids. They don't invest in the fighter, because if you win a purse bid, you've got to put a show on, haven't you? You've got to do all the running around and everything. So it's best not to win a purse bid, isn't it? If you don't believe in your kid. If you believe in your fighter, that's what happens. So... Do you think do you think Joshua loses before he fights Fury again? Well I think he I think he probably beat his pool off, but if he doesn't it won't shock me. But Pool off's forty after Christmas, isn't it? So he's another old man. No, so these are old men. Old men. You know, coming with old men, we're title fights, we're old men like that. What what's going on? You know what, though? This genera there aren't many people coming through, is there, in, in the heavyweight division in this generation? When you think about it, there's not many, is there? Like, talented, no. proper talent. Yeah. Not good, is it? All right, next question. Um, pep all right, pep talk, sporting icon, Tatman strikes back, count punch boxing, boxing AD, all sing from the same hymn sheet, and clearly all have some sort of connection with Matchroom and get access to the fighters. They all create videos bashing anything that's not Matchroom. Do, do they care about the integrity of the sport or is it just about money and views? 
one of your viewers there that saw the caravan whoring themselves out. But it's an odd job what they're doing, and it's, you've got to be dedicated and that, but there's got to be some transparency out there. There's got to be, it's got to be even now, how many novices get to go on any of them channels and have an interview? I mean, how many of them are hiding behind camera? Pep, Pep Talk USA, you of UK, is it? Yeah, yeah, Pep Talk, yeah, yeah. No, I think, that, I think that's all right. I've watched that a few times. I've seen, seen him all right. But they, they do, they tend to hang around with the same sort of people. I'd like to see him <clears> some <throat> of these shows and interview some of these novice kids who are turning over. You know, things like that. But if they don't do it views, it's a waste of the time, isn't it? You need to get people to back you. So they don't cost you a lot of money. I know what I spent in the first two years. I'm like, oh, this is dear. If you're not earning as well, you're just throwing money at something and it becomes addictive. But it's, it's a lot better now, but it weren't. What do you think of that channel, that uh, Counter Punch Boxing? What do you think about in the USA one? I've not seen, I don't think I've seen that one. There's that many now, isn't there? They're all like sheep. Uh, the, thing, the thing is, though, mate, they all sound the same. Yeah, I have a problem with them that are behind camera, unless I know somebody that knows them and that they're all right. I have a problem with that. Why I'd be behind camera? What, what was it to be scared of? Maybe it's just maybe, you know, inferior co complexion, maybe the way they, I don't know, the way they look. I don't know. Just it might be something like that. You know? If you put yourself out there, you've got you know, you've got to expect to be, have people have a pop at you. I mean, you want to see some of the emails I get and comments. But you've got to be thick skin. You've got to be thick skin, route because if you're not, they'll beat you down. So they probably get a bit of abuse. I know I do, but it really bother me if anybody's got a problem. Come see me. Don't chat shit. So one next question. Oh yeah, it's one last question. Uh, what, what's your take on Aram's comments um, about Tens Crawford that he's losing money on his last two fights and he's basically, if you want to sign with Al Heyman, he can. Terence Crawford, don't get his son out there on social media. He needs to take some tips off the white rhino, doesn't he? But not overdo yeah, it. Because yeah. if you can be that good a fighter, you should have a bit of a profile, but you haven't got a profile, has he? So he just maybe needs to work on that or get employ somebody to do that for him. <sighs> actually, I've got a good question for you. Actually, just off the off the bat, back in the alley days, who would you say would have a really good profile? You know, all those good fighters in the heavyweight division. Who, in terms, if social media was <coughs> obviously, you know, invented back then, who would have a really good profile, in your opinion? In the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the alley era, yeah, like Fraser, Foreman, Ken Norton. All those sort of fighters who do you reckon would have had not a really Joe good social Frazier, media? Not Joe Fraser, not Joe Foreman, but George Foreman now, but not the 70s George Foreman. Ali yeah. Wood, Ali, uh, Floyd Patterson, he was more late 60s, early 70s. Floyd Patterson, uh, I think Jerry Quarry, I've seen some stuff he's done, he's 46, 70, he's seen, he'd be a world champion today in McCruiserway. Jerry Quarry, uh, Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. Yeah, Larry Holmes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken Norton, they'd be all right on social media. Joe Frazier won. He, 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 uh, he, uh, but that's why him and Ali were a good match, weren't they? You know what I mean? To a, a good clash of styles, weren't they? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's my questions then for today. Is that you for today, Viv? Not bad, that. Yeah, I thought you were going to do a, uh, a show because you just texted me, Sean, who we had on yesterday. See what he's saying. Oh, look at that one. Oh, oh yeah. Is that the guy that you had on yesterday? Yeah. He's... I know, yeah. What? Just text me now. Do you, like, do you like him? Do I like him? Yeah, I, look, I, if, if they're going to come on here, right, and they're going to show the face like you've done today, you were a bit like that, weren't you, about showing your yeah. face, weren't you? If they're going to come on, you've got to give people respect for coming on because when you get in 
five, six hundred messages a day just on messages, right? Obviously, we delete loads. If you're getting 500 messages every single day, um, between 150 and 250 emails, I, I don't enough hours for me to go through it all. You know what I mean? But a lot of comments get deleted. You can't answer every single email. I can read them, but some of the stuff that comes through, 25 and 30 questions on emails. <laughs> I, I'm going to get through that workload. Because I've got to sleep, haven't you, eight hours, and I'm only having four hours at the moment. I'm working 16, 18 hours a day on this. Most of the time on my own, I do get a bit of help. We're a tech team, and there's a girl, the girl that helps me, but... I just think that you ain't enough hours in the day, but it's it's hard. Do you know what I mean? So and these these people are coming on on here. I'm, I've opened the floodgates now, on I? And people want to come on. Harley Marshall, I forgot about you. Remind me Monday. There's people want to come on and express their feelings and what they like about boxing and what they don't like, and and I think that's good. So I respect them all that come on. If you want to start acting, go. I did. So one, one a couple of weeks ago come on and he got on and his questions were horrible questions and he, he got aggressive and things like that. But he thought you were live. <laughs> you know, that's how thick, thick you were. You, you, I know you're watching, you weirdo. Stop stalking, stalking me bins. He thought we were live, so he, he came on and he was coming out with all these, this, these file stuff. I says, well, come and see me. You think you're a bit tough guy. What are you coming out with all this stuff? I'm coming on to ruin your channel. What are you ruining my channel, mate? You're not live. You thought you were live. So you do get a few. So I have to be careful of why I've on. And then there's been other people who want to come on. And they don't want to show the face. Well, why is that? Why, why don't you want to show your face? And they want to, so they want to sit behind the screen and read questions. That's going to try and put my channel in a bad, bad light. Then we have other people who want to send text messages pretending to be Dennis and things like that. And Dennis doesn't even bother with social media, but he's seen them and thinks it's funny. But the, so these people are acting out the fantasies, aren't they? So it, it, it's kind of kind of funny. There's what's the other guy who comes on? Porky's missing teeth. Have we seen that one? It's a pair of false teeth, isn't it? His profile picture. He's referring to my two bottom teeth here that the police backed out my mouth. Back of a police car. But uh, the point I want to make is that these people, if I put a video out within half an hour, Porky's missing teeth or put a comment on it, it'll say, any news on a dentist or something like that. And then I feel like replying to him, but I don't. So I refrain myself. A fucking bastard. But I, I feel like saying, yeah, I'm just waiting for my passport and the date to go get them done. The dough's there waiting on the passport and the date, and then I'll have them done. And that, then what's he going to come out with then? When's your hair yeah. transplant? Or, or when are you going <laughs> to get a better jacket or something? Because you sat there in a red Michael Jackson nonce jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of my best of, uh, outfit. Michael Jackson's has got a black line through it, hasn't it? Mine has. It's still the same make as this, but red. But uh, not my not coat. Have you, still got, have you still got the Marcus Jackson jacket? I've still got it. I've only worn it about four times. Is it coming back out? I went to my local pub in it. <laughs> Porky! <laughs> so what? What? Are you going to break out and do us a, a, a song? See what you mean? I said, oh, forget it. Anyway, I went for a piss. Come out. And they've got this song on Beat It by Michael Jackson. Everybody's taking piss. And I thought, what are they going on about? And then they're going, you got on. I said, yeah, Michael Jackson's as... Got a big collar and a black put on it. Mine was just red, but now I don't want to be better uh, uh, outfits. But well, you've got to, if you're going to put yourself out there, you're going to get shot at, aren't you? I, I, I'm, I'm big enough to take it on chin. I can take it, me. If you can do over ten years in prison over a twelve and a half year period, well, why would anything like this bother them every time in my life? Because I know other side of the coin, don't I? The other side Ten years you in prison for? Eh? Ten years was, was you in prison for? Not, Ten years. not on the chart, for over a, from October oh, 91. Yeah. October 91 till May. 
2004, just over 10 years, over that 12, 12 year, seven month period. So, because you keep breaking your license and recall and probation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get into a cycle that you can't get out. And I did one of them in Arts Thinking Skills courses before I got out in 04, and I never looked back. But the point I want to make is if you put yourself out there on social media, you're, you're there to be shot at, aren't you? Your appearance, uh, whatever you say. So what you have to do your research, you've got to get things right. If you say something that you believe in it, well, you say it, don't I have an opinion, I'm opinionated. And, I, and if I want to say something, I want to say, if anybody's got a problem, they can come on my channel or come and see me here, they're welcome here. Come and sit in that chair there. I said, right, what are you not happy with? Like people pulling me at shows. Fuck you, want to hear me about, about what? What? You've said I've got a padded record. Well, you have. And? See where I'm coming from? You're fighting guys who are losing records. You know what I mean? Well, if, you, if you're 4-0 and, and 4 have got losing records, what's that? Padded, isn't it? But you expect that the first four fights, but once you get by that 10th fight, you've got to step it up, haven't you? Or even that eighth yeah. fight. But all boxers need respect for getting in the ring. All of them. But we can all have an opinion on here. But if people are going to have a go at you, let's have a look at them. Let's have a look at their faces. Let's have your own channel. So she sends them a, a reply. You want to come on channel? It's pretty simple. Here's the email. Get in touch. And she'll sort you an email out. I send you an email, sorry, and sort your slot out, and you can come on here like you've come on. She got in touch with you, didn't she, when you were got in touch? Uh, she did. Carly got in touch with you, didn't she? Yeah. Got you on here, didn't Me? you? First time, yeah. So you you've come on, and you've said yeah. you've said you you said your opinion, aren't you? And and I feel well, that's good that. But you could have been anybody, because I'm thinking, who's this guy? So oh, so and so's been in touch, are you? Who's this guy here? Well, you're on. And we get on all right, don't we? You've had a, a, a yeah, yeah. to your missus's yeah. house, didn't I? So, yeah. so you've come on. And, but at first, I'm like, who's that? I'm very distrusting because half of them on there are double agents running loads of accounts. I wish we could do that, but we'll get took off here because you, you can't. We, I can't do what you're doing because we'll lose our license. So that ain't fair, is it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? But... I don't take it too far. No, it's keep, hey? keep doing what you're doing, pal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, your your channel is unique in the, in the sense of, like, you say things that no one else is prepared to say. Like you said, you put yourself on the line. And like you said, I think sooner or later, I think the casual market will come to this channel and will, you know, open their eyes to what of possibilities are. Well, a lot know. of all these that have got plenty to say for themselves, they have a working boxing industry. Or the mad crazy fans, and they want to do what I'm doing, but they dare yeah. come out of the comfort zone. I would like that. Uh, AJ Hobson said to me, uh, Oh, Ross, why don't you just do something like what I'm doing now? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I can do it. He's like, I'm telling you. And I'm like, Yeah, well, I was thinking, and I was looking at AJ Hobson, and I thought, Yeah, big, he's got a big scrap metal business, hasn't he? Big, massive million quid out of 25 meter swimming pool, all that carry on. And I thought, yeah, I, I fancy some of that. I'm obviously not going to get to that level, am I? But, and he said he had to come out of his comfort zone. So he gave me the incentive. He owns Innovation Alloys. He gave me the incentive. He said, look, you'll do it. So, and, I, and obviously I got stuck in for a few years. And nobody gave me a penny. For, I've been doing it three years next week. Nobody gave me so much as one pence. No, I had money to, to get stuck into this. And I spent a fortune doing it for the first two years, a fortune. And now it's at a stage where it doesn't cost me anything now. But it was costing me a fortune. But nobody can give me any money. All them people that are saying that Dennis backed me on here. No. First video I ever did was in, well in a boardroom at Dennis's, in the boardroom. The first ever video I did was in the boardroom. And I had, a, I had an office in there. Dennis was one next door. Michelle's one next door. And the first video I did were I seen NASA, and then I did Liam Cameron with Chris Smedley behind camera going like that, like that to me, trying to put me off. And after I got in the car and I went home and I thought, geez, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. But 
all them saying that Dennis backed me. No, he didn't. I said, why don't we get a camera then? And we'll get fighters some exposure, get them to sell more, more tickets. He went, yeah, go buy one then and give me a receipt. So I went and bought it all, a grand I spent, all the equipment. And I've got, I've got that stuff then. And then he went, oh, you'll be all right then. You can get, you get, you get a YouTube channel or something. I thought, yeah, I'm stuck with this now. <laughs> but if I'd have wanted to, I could have put pressure on it for money. And I thought, you know what, I might have a go at it. But they were saying, ah, oh, you could always use it to film kids in egg and spoon race on sports day, you know, camera and all this. This is it, yeah. Well, this is it, yeah. So, and, and that's how it started, really. Then I started doing them in my shed. And it's sort of like grown on it. And then obviously I've got these back in me now. SYPS. So I've been lucky, and I really. And, and people yeah. keep saying, I want four cross, how are you doing for all right? He keeps saying to me, uh, I remember when you started like the show, but I don't think about that because I think it was more fun then. I didn't have people kind of saying, oh, that's got to come down. Oh, you can't do this, can't do that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? I just used to buy from it, you know. And I were obviously a lot fatter then, one I was fat, fat as a pig Mitchell, man. Like that. But obviously, it, the weight has come off me. I'm just on 14 stone now, 14 too. But it's been a gradual thing. And you're not given anything in life, are you, Viv? Nobody gives no, you not. the nice the nice things in life. Nobody gives you anything. You've got to come out of your comfort zone and have a go. So all them people that have got plenty to say for yourselves, go set your YouTube channels up and let's have a look at you. Let's see what you've got to say. Instead of sending me pictures of my children sliced up. Yeah, that's what I get. Yeah, they're on file then. Not, I'll never do, do anything with the police with them or anything, but if anything happens, well, the, the, yeah. the mum will have to take them to the police, won't she, and deal with it because there's some sick individuals out there, isn't there? Sick. We've had people ringing here saying they're going to burn factory down if I say another word about Joe Gallagher. That's a true story. I could go on forever, mate. I could go on forever. Why do you think manager feels here when they've got women working here? Well, He's going to go tell them because he, he lives with one of them. He's going to go home and tell them, isn't he? So then they're like, no, Porky, what are we getting involved with here? You see where I'm coming from? Is it a troll? Is it yeah, some yeah. boxing business? Who cares, but all that does is gives me the incentive to do more videos and say what I want about any of them, including you, Joe Gallagher. <laughs> That's been a year, so it ain't going to bother me. Nobody's going to stop me doing this the only person that will stop me doing this is me or youtube and i've got all my lives left on youtube and every video that goes out is a certificate 18 and up you know not for kids yeah all bases are covered so roll the dice if you want to get me off youtube or want to come around here and block me or anything like that my pals and people i've grown up with from age of six back this channel so I'm, I'm in a good position because I know how rotten the boxing industry can be. For example, Tony Bellew, young officer when I was with Dennis, spoke to Dennis. So I'm not having him going on social media, upsetting my son. I didn't even know he had a son. Why, wow, what's he done? Well, he's gone on his Twitter with a video saying that I've never beat a champion. You are not Has he beat a champion? No, but apparently that upset his son. So Dennis is like, you have to take that video down. I'm like, what are you on about? So I took it down. It's the only one I've ever took down. And I don't even think, I don't even know, I don't even think, sorry, that were a Porky video. I think that were a YouTube video. I think it were a YouTube video. I don't know. You'd have to check. 2017. We still got it? No, it's took down. It was, uh, it might have been before I started Porky's because uh, it were in a Mazda. Uh, and then when I started this channel, I had an E-Class, a silver E-Class, I ain't got that now, but, so it probably was well, just a Twitter one, when I had my Twitter account, but how is that doing anything wrong? Obviously touched the nerve, didn't it? So all you put people who are Tony Bellew's biggest fans, if you want to tweet him, tweet him, is it Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man? If you get a chance, remind him that he has never beat a champion, British Commonwealth, European and World, Mr. Vacant Belt. <laughs> hey, am I right? You want to stick it to yeah. me? I'll stick it to them, won't I? 
I've got there's what are they gonna throw at me? People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, should they? I'm transparent about what I am and what I've done. Are they ringing up an office like that? Ringing up Dennis's office like that, trying to get me in trouble? We pissed ourselves afterwards anyway, but I had to take it down to court to save aggravation. But I took it down. Are you? Are you? Are you and Dennis going to uh, shake hands? Yeah, I might say hello to him one day. Been here. I didn't answer the door. <laughs> so, yeah, Dennis is a good guy, but I don't think I could do boxing with him. But I wish him all the best. And his show that he's putting on, is it any worse than what than what they're being served up now? It's not any better, but is it any worse? You might as well do it. You might as well do it, Annie, if you can, if you yeah. can put it on. You're trying something different, isn't it? You put that one on yeah. uh, uh, Jamie McDonnell. World title at Donny Rover's ground, lost 300 grand on it. Can you imagine that? Oh, we'll get that back off McDonald down the line. Well, he didn't, did he? Because he left him and went to Eddie Hearn, didn't he? So, but could you see Dennis working with Eddie Hearn again? Yeah, I could. Could you imagine if he did? Could you imagine what I'd have to say on my channel if he worked with Eddie Hearn again? If Dennis worked with Eddie Hearn, could you imagine? My channel would blow up, wouldn't it? I'd be like, what? What about Steffi Bull working with him on this show? Hey? <laughs> hey? Steffi Bull and Dennis? Hey? Sworn enemies for life? Working together? <laughs> hey? I wouldn't have helped him anyway on this show. Just for that reason, because I've got a bit more about me than that. But I've oh, lost my fucking car keys. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, no, it's, that's why it does to you, doesn't it, boxing? It's all designed for everybody to fall out and then kiss and make up. Kiss and make up, isn't it, John? Well, it is what it isn't. So thanks for coming on. I'm sure I've got no some to do to me over the post season, I? Nathan Stewart. I'm going to post them today. I don't know where the big envelopes are, though. I know you asked, you asked for this, didn't you, Nate? This is what he wanted. He wanted this. So I'm going to tell you where to get them from. Right, that's a helmet. Uh, you get these from Amazon. I think it was about 20 quid, Nate, but I can't give it you because it's the only one I've got. But I'm going to send you gloves to you. All right, I'll send you gloves to you. I haven't got them signed by anybody because you didn't you didn't return or you wanted me to get them to sign to. You said Clinton or Frock, so you 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 haven't, you haven't said. But it's a lot of messing about. But the brand new, they've never been used. They're only thirty quid a pop. So well done, Nathan. I'll get them to you today. I think that's about it. Viv, we'll wrap it up. All right, pal. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, give your missus my best. She's still got a Range Rover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you smoking about in it? Can you drive? <laughs> yeah, I can drive, yeah. Yeah, so do you sniff about in it? Nah, man, nah. nah. Right. I ain't, uh, In case you nah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What you got planned for today? What I've got planned for today? few emails, can have a chilled one today. Chilled one, yeah. They've uh, obviously got a few shoots and that in the weekend, so. What is what job you do? You, you're a mod like you're also, right? Yeah, yeah, I, dan I dance and that, yeah. So obviously I've got a lot of um, shoots and that coming up, so, yeah. yeah. Like John Travolta, that kind of dancing. Yeah, yeah Saturday Night Fever, yeah. <laughs> 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 on that note, we'll end it. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. You've been a gentleman. You take care. You Peace too, out. Carl. See you in a bit, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mate. Right. Bye -bye. Bye -bye, mate. Oh, no. uh, that were young Viv from Birmingham, living out in swanky uh, Arrogate, out that way, or somewhere out that way. I think it were Arrogate. I've been there, but short term memory on Sunday again. So that's about it. Uh, I should have had Mark Tibbs on last night, but 
he uh, he broke his glasses. So we changed it for this morning. I couldn't get my computer on, so I'm going to rebook that with him. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. Isn't that strange, is that? Uh, so, all right. So, thanks for coming on. Peace out. Keep on keep squatting boxing. Uh, shout out to Innovation Allies and South Yorkshire Packaging. And uh, where's the other one? Big shout out to Dempsey Whale, DNA Food, fantastic. Oh, you can get old Porky and Trim. Uh, oh, that looks nice, that steak. Peace out. I'm eating steak. I'm eating steak. Don't have nightmares.